Hey, it worked amazing that time. That was great. It didn't didn't lag or anything. Cool. Um, so uh, we'll start with Fortune. Um, Fortune, you head off and you start making your way through the bar and keeping your hood pulled up is probably like like a good idea here because you see again mostly women uh, that are that are yeah. walking like the streets and um, there's not like I said not a whole lot of people actually take like the surface streets so. You're fairly unaccosted as you kind of travel, um, travel along, and knowing what you know now, like, hey, this is kind of a place where I probably shouldn't be found out alone. You know, you probably yeah. try and stay a little bit more stealthy, which is totally doable. Um, you do occasionally see uh, a couple of men that are like, uh, like carrying groceries or something um, to that degree for like their significant others, and they're kind of walking around. There's probably some guys like shopping with their with their wives. Um, but other than that, you don't really see a whole lot of men. Could could Esso here be significant overlord? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's dual meaning here. Uh, so, yeah. So, you get to, like, uh, like this location, and you see that there's, like, a set of stairs that go down. And there's, like, a, it's kind of like a the, the staircase is all kind of, like, it's metal, and it, it's a little bit rusted. And it looks like an old, like, subway entrance that's just unused. Like, it's not used anymore. Um, yeah. And you start to, like, head down, and your feet are, like, clanking on the metal. But it's much quieter in here. The wind isn't kind of howling through the city streets. Um, and you can see, like, where there's, like, a... Like, you do indeed enter into, like, an old, like, kind of abandoned subway station, almost. Um, but you can see that there's, like, uh, there's like a bazaar set up with a bunch of people in, like, breath masks, like, selling things. And there's quite a few people down here. Um and uh, you see that, like, over in one of the areas, there's, like, a there's like the sign for the bar that you're supposed to go to. It's, like, an, it's probably neon lights, because that's how everything is, you know? Uh, yeah. And it's got, like, a it's got like a door that leads into, like, a decompression chamber or whatever, and then another door that goes in. It's got, like, a double door system. Um, yeah. So, you, you know, you go up, and you open the door, and you close the door, and you hear it, like, pressurize appropriately, and, it, you know, a little light comes up, like, safe to take off your mask, and you take it off, and you enter in. Um, there's, like, five people in here, uh, and I think as soon as you walk in, you do a quick scope of the area, and you immediately identify Chains. Um, he is probably about, uh, 300 pounds, he's a big, chunky guy, um, but he's one of those big, chunky guys that, like, you still wouldn't mess with in a fight, because clearly it's mostly muscle, he just yeah. isn't, he just isn't cut or defined, right? Mm -hmm. Um... And, uh, and you identify him probably because, uh, you, you see him, like, swinging a little, like, uh, like, a like a three or four link size piece of iron chain around that's making, like, a little bit of noise, and you see him, like, sipping on a drink and, like, watching the, the, like, plasma television that's in there. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and probably. Yeah, basically Roadhog. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my god. There you go. <laughs> And, and especially on a planet that you have to wear a face mask. I know, it's like perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Uh, so yeah, so you go up to him. Um, and like right, right as you get to him, he turns and looks and he's got like this kind of like full like bushy black beard and he's got this black curly hair that's kind of a mess and going everywhere. Uh, and he, he looks you up and down and he's like, Fortune? James? He's like, ah, yes. I, I, don't, I don't say it as a question, I say it like I know. Right, yeah, you say it like you know. He's like, ah, good. Have a seat. Get a drink. I'm just watching this, and he points up to like the, um, like the television, and there's uh, like the equivalent of like a like a sports game on. Um, it's probably very similar to like football. It's in like a dome that you can see. That's all like you know, obviously environmentally pressurized. It's equivalent to basically American football. Um, same kind of concept. Okay. Actually, it might be rugby-ish. Um, and you can see that all the players are like men in their they're you know like doing the rugby thing and playing around and uh he's like it's crazy right that's an understatement looks kind of fun though that's the problem but you won't find me dead out there getting having them yell at me and as he says that like it it flashes to like the coaching team which is all women right like there's this really like <laughs> stern looking woman with like gray hair 
um, like pulled back in a tight bun and she's like yelling like you can't hear her right uh, you can just hear mm-hmm. like the commentators but she's like yelling at the uh, at like the, the players out there and she like you see, probably at that moment you see like one of the players come over and he's got like his head down and she like she like grabs his shirt and pulls him down and like slaps him in the face and like yeah, I was gonna say it's him. obviously not positive coaching. Right, yeah, he just slaps him in the face like really hard, and he just takes it, and then she just like pushes him back onto the field, and you know he runs back out there, and you know it's it's all very sexist. Nice. Um, yeah, cool. So uh, so yeah, he he turns and he's like he's like kind of enthralled with it, um, but doesn't like forward the conversation at all. Yeah. Nah, uh, I go. So he's. I look around suspiciously. I go, is this safe to talk? Um, yeah, he looks around and he goes, he says, see the bartender? And you see it's actually a guy, like, bartending. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has one of those chokers on that you that you saw before. He's like, okay. Ah, I met his owner. She's cool with foreigners, which is what we are, right? Here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This foreign is a get, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he chuckles. He's like, yeah. Yeah, tell me about it. He's like, we got a problem, though. Listen, I don't know how we're going to find this guy. He's way underground. It's probably why they want him, and probably has something to do with all this. And he kind of, like, does the this by, like, looking at everything at possible around, like, how <laughs> fucked up the whole place is. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, you know, uh, as far as I know, Victor's a guy's name. And he kind of, like, implies, like, very like heavy implication on that like yeah victor's a dude and we're a planet that doesn't like dudes so they probably want him because he's a dude that would make sense i guess have you spoken with anybody from the cfe department yet he's like send him a message haven't heard anything back yet though i uh yeah, i fear it to talk to a female government as a male he kind of nods and he's like, yeah, my thoughts exactly. We need to find a representative, somebody who will maybe take a small percentage of the cut. It's going to suck for us, but otherwise I'm not sure how we get the job done. Well, I'm running with a, a group. I didn't really want to involve them too much. None of them are clearest, but I I trust him for the most part. He's like, well, they know how to shoot in case things go bad? Hmm. Two of them, well, one of them, well, she's got a shotgun. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like, I think, I think he nods and approves. He's like, that's my kind of girl. He's like, ah, listen. He's like, I don't know. You, you, when's the last time you tangled with the Kuchera? Uh, personally, never really got in with them. Heard of listen, them. Never really got in. They're some crazy motherfuckers. Blow themselves up and shit. They don't care. That's why we got a problem. Alive, that makes this contract so much harder. I was thinking, if there's a guy running some underground ring here through the Kuchera, probably looking for recruits all the time. Maybe we go undercover on this one. That would be the easiest. He nods, he's like, yeah, but getting in's the easy part, right? It's getting out, that's the hard part. Yeah, I don't want this to take all fucking year, man. I got yeah. other places to be. Might be easier... Smash and grab, but gotta find him first. Definitely. What about you? What's your thoughts? It's a good question. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying to run through scenarios, like he said, that aren't gonna take half a year to complete. Right. Yeah. Because go undercover, like you've got to gain trust, and then you got to get in the inner circle, and then you gotta probably do some. Well, yeah. From what you've said, Victor isn't really a big timer there, so it may be easy to find out who is. Ask me a couple of questions, but I can't just walk in on day one and be like, hey, you know Victor? Right, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that like if, if you're like stalling, he probably looks and he's probably like, good news is we might be able to, to at least work outside of the system they got going on here. At least they give at least some of them, and he kind of like again like motions for the bar he's like some of them don't mind foreigners especially the shadier parts maybe we can just do some door to door maybe some of the backer alleys yeah. might get us in maybe. somewhere at least a better location <sighs> maybe speak with his owner and see if she knows some other people who are foreigner friendly 
Not a bad plan. And and it's he, probably he, the best idea. Get some like, reconnaissance before we go too far. Yeah, he kind of like looks like Mar. He's like, hey, big man, come down here. And he like, you see him trundle over, and he's like, what'll it be, sir? And he's like, hey, bring out Martha. We gotta talk to her. And he's like, right away, <laughs> sir. I thought she was with us. <laughs> oh, that's, that's rough. Um, yeah, so he, he nods and he runs into the back and um, a, a kind of stern looking woman that's clearly like aging. Uh, she's Middle Eastern again. Um, and she's got kind of gray wings kind of flowing in her hair. So she's obviously, you know, on, on maybe her late 40s, early 50s. Um, but she's in she's in like, you know, pretty good shape and she looks pretty good for that for that age. And she's clearly the like she's your typical owner of a CD bar establishment. Like she didn't take nice. shit from nobody and she could probably pick up a bottle and break it over somebody's head in a, in a heartbeat if she had to. Um, yeah. cause the easiest way to get rid of people that are, you know, fucking up your bars, throw them out into the thick atmosphere where they can't breathe. <laughs> and that then, would be da- yeah. And then that, throw that the, would... and then throw the rebreather farther and make them go get it. <laughs> that, that would be a, an easy way to keep it quiet in your bar. Right. Yeah. You don't like, <laughs> If the bouncers literally throw you out into the place you can't breathe, that's probably a problem. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, you know it's it's relatively calm in those kind of areas. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she walks out and she she kind of like looks you over and she's like, ah, you're not that pretty. She's like, uh, that's all right, foreigner. I can understand it. You working with him? She you nods the chains. She goes. Well, what do you want? Um, you know any foreigner-friendly handlers that know anything about the Kuchera Syndicate? <laughs> she kind of like she looks around a little bit and she's like, Kuchera? Eh, no about them. Don't know where they're hiding that. And uh, it's a good thing too. Government be on my head like nobody business. But. Mm-hmm. I'd be able to find somebody for a price. Maybe buy a few drinks. Maybe tip real well. We'll see. That shouldn't be a problem. I hold on. Let me pull up my character sheet again. Because I have more monies now. You did I'm just receive at gonna... least five hundred credits. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got a lot. I got a lot of money burning a hole in my pocket. So I probably put like fifty credits down on the counter. Yeah, yeah. And you, you slide over the chip, and she like flips it over and sees the the amount. And she's she nods. She's like. All right, and she pulls out like another like uh like a like a little like data chip, and she slides it over. And she's like, "That's my girl. Her name's Bertha. I would uh, suggest you uncollared." And she kind of like looks at you like pointedly. She's like, "Don't let her get too close to you. She likes taking trophies, but she probably knows <laughs> more about the the underworld than anyone else I know. She'll help you out." Appreciate it. Uh... Can I get a drink on the road? She's like, yeah. I'll get JJ out here. And she, uh, she walks back and she, she like taps on JJ's shoulder. She like says something in his ear and like nods to you. And he clearly like, he goes, uh, he comes down. He's like, uh, what'll it be, sir? Our specialty is old fashioned. That sounds awesome. I knew it would. (laughs) And, uh, yeah. And then he, you know, he makes you a, whatever the, equivalent of an old fashioned in the universe is. And uh he hands I, it to I you. feel like the name old fashioned it probably hasn't changed much. No, probably not. It may be something different now, but definitely yeah. the name is is an appropriate drink name. Um yeah, he hands it to you and it's pretty good. You know, it's it's not bad. Um and so you sit there with uh yeah, old fashioned. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's good. Um so you sit there with chains and just like plan or, like, pop in the data chip to see what's going on? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think that uh, you pop in the data chip and you see, like, it's giving you a location to go to. Um, that's, uh, you know, you'll have to... It'll be some travel there, but, you know, it's a it's a location to head to. Um, and I think that, you know, after you guys, like, talk it over for a second, he looks up and the game's over. Um, and, uh, and he's like, ah, well... Perhaps we should get on the road. Sooner than later. It's like, yeah. Ain't all making, right. making no money sitting here. Yeah. And he, like, stands up, and you hear just the jangling of chains underneath his, like, cloak. Can't see him, 
but clearly mm-hmm. like he's just got like a bunch attached in there somewhere and his cloak yeah. is like it falls heavily like around him like like it's just yeah. it's just weighed down um and he picks it up like it's no problem and just like straps it on you know throws his jacket on he's like all right let's go and he like pulls out and he's got like this revolver but it looks custom right that's like a custom make revolver and he flips out the okay. cylinder and spins it and flips it back in and you know holsters it again I go, uh, what do I want to say to that? Um, I go, do you ever do anything quietly? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think he looks, he's like, quiet's not really my style. Or like, making a presence. Well, we'll see how far that gets us. <laughs> he's like, I ain't dead yet. I don't plan on dying on this backwater-ass planet. Let's go. Yeah, roll out. Yeah, roll out. Cool. And then we slash cut over to uh, the group of you who have your, your rebreathers on, right? And you're, like, walking through the the um, the atmosphere, and it's kind of thick. And it's wearing you out a little bit because all the walking in this thick, thick atmosphere. Um, it's kind of hot outside, too, but you're in the shade of some buildings, so it's nice. Uh, and you, you arrive at the location. You, you have some, kind of the same visuals as what... Uh, what fortune had right and you arrive at this location uh where you see like from the google maps like you look at it and like you know boomer maybe you like tap to it and like hey we're in the place um and uh yeah you see that there's like this alley that leads down and like around a business complex um and there's like a door um like a glass door that has like uh the the double door seal thing where you can repressurize or whatever um and uh, it's just it's just got like a like a number on it, right? Just like a designation for the unit number, like zero seven one two or something like that. Um, and that's all it is. It's got no other like signage or um, or name or lettering or anything else on the the window or the door that you're at. Hmm. But this is totally the location where you were, where you found to go. Are, are there any like windows or anything yeah so there's a say? window but it's like it's it's got like um like a tint on it so you can't see through it okay. uh and then the door itself is glass that leads into like the double like the pressurized the pressure chamber or whatever to repressurize um and you can see inside there's like lights on it looks like a probably looks almost like a dentist office inside like a waiting area of some sort and maybe you can see just the outline or just, like, the, 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 the edge of, like, a window desk or whatever, where, like, there is ostensibly a receptionist. Sure. I, uh... Hmm. Is it is it a female receptionist at the desk? You can't see from this angle. You just see, like... You just see, basically, like, the, the pillar, and then you see, like, the, a little sliver of the opening that leads, obviously, deeper into the the location sure. and then you see like I, a little I mean, waiting area I, I suppose Oscar would just go up and if there's no like yeah you can just open the door you know oh okay yeah but you get sure. in the door and like if, if you all join him like you close the door behind you and uh, a voice talks to you and you can see now a little bit deeper inside of the room um, you can see that there's a reception desk and there is a woman sitting there at the at the desk um, and she looks at you guys, and uh, she pushes a button on the intercom. And she goes, "Yes, can I help you today?" Oscar uh, just says, "Here to discuss suits." Yeah, I think I think she just she goes, she nods, and she's like, "All right, stand by." And she pushes the button. You hear as it re- as it pressurizes, and then little ding. It's safe to take off your mask, and you all demask and enter in um sure i think oscar probably just leaves the canister on sure yeah just in case it's like <laughs> <laughs> why not sure yeah, yeah yeah so you guys all walk into like this waiting room and there's like there's like faint like elevator-ish music playing um and uh and the woman says uh yes you said uh suits um were you looking for any particular style or make and she's talking directly to you, uh, Oscar. Mm-hmm. Um, Does she appear to be human? human oh, yeah, female? she's human. 
She's a human female. Um, she looks like a local, too. She's Middle Eastern descent. Young, probably mid-twenties. Yeah, so Oscar, Oscar would just say... Um, she, so she was asking, like, you know, okay, do you have a make and model or whatever? Yeah. But he, he would say, um, more, more interested in custom jobs. Tough to buy 3X suits off the shelf. <laughs> she goes... Ah, yes, I know, dear. Uh, yes, very well. We'll take some measurements. Um, what are you, uh, what are you, and she kind of, like, looks, she looks over you, and she's like, what are you looking to spend? Do you, um, do you have any stock on hand I could look at? She's like, As an example. Yeah, she's like, so you want default prices. I got you. And, no, uh, no, I just... Okay. I would like to see your work. She, she kind of like knowingly was like, ah, demonstration. Yes, we do provide those. Uh, hold on one moment, I'll, uh, I'll get the demonstrators out. And she, um, like, you see her, like, uh, she pushes a button, and, like, you see, like, a like a plastic that wasn't there before just, like, appear, like, a guard in between her and the, um, and where you guys are sitting, because she's behind, like, a walled desk. And she gets up and, like, goes to walk into the back to get somebody. So you guys are left kind of sitting there. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know how much Oscar would do to make the situation any less awkward, but yeah. So Gogo and and Boomer, what are you guys doing during this whole exchange? Actually, uh, Boomer's gonna take this moment. He's gonna actually uh, pull out his data slab. I mean, since they're in a waiting room, they're obviously waiting for it anyway. Mm -hmm. He's gonna. Can I use my contacts? criminals to get onto like the dark net quote unquote and I actually want to see if I can look up some information on a particular uh, criminal band sure I think that you can find maybe what's equivalent to that um it's going to require a role though it's going to require a computer check to delve through some information to See if you can find any entrances into said dark net. Okay, uh, I linked you the specifics of what I'm looking for. Or the specifics of the group I'm looking for. Yeah, absolutely. I figured as much that was about. <laughs> nice. Yeah. You are rolling those real well today. Makes up for all the times Zetch lit himself on fire. Or the last combat you had with this character. Um, you, haven't even, <laughs> yeah, you haven't even used a reroll today. And I've made you guys roll a lot. I'm trying to do that more, make you guys roll more so you can actually utilize your character thing. But it's hard, man. So, I think that you do find like a, like an access point that you're able to get in. Um, and I'll just use that for determining that information too. Um, <laughs> there is absolutely no word of any of them operating in, uh, in this particular system. Okay. Um, but I think that you probably with the 12 uh, can probably determine somewhat why that's true as well. Um, so there appears to be a lot of activity um, from the Kuchera Syndicate in this system. And they kind of just, well, they kind of just uh, kind of... Got, gotcha. Rival territory. Yeah, isn't? rival territory. Right, yeah. Yeah. That's basically what's going on. Am I able to determine what their territory would be with this kind of success, though? Um, the Guchera Syndicate? Uh, no. Uh, the Stockland. Okay. Uh, yeah, from, from the, so, 
I don't think there's a whole lot of information locally. Um, connecting to the sector net and then beaming that out, like, yeah, you could you could totally do that, but you would probably not want to do that because you have a very uh, liability of, or there's a lot more liability doing it from a planet than doing it from your ship, because it's like an extra an extra path that you have to go through that may have security protocols on it, right? Because you got to go through the planetary. Uh, communications and then also get into the sector net communications. No, nope, I got you. Okay. Uh, then with that information, I'm. Yeah. This uh, this does not seem like a good location to find that information out. Nope. I got you. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um. So after a few minutes, uh, Gogo, -Go, are you doing anything? Or are you are you watching Boomer do his thing? Yeah, I think that uh, Gogo would kind of be like looking over his shoulder and then kind of give him, you know, the look. And then he probably shakes his head no. And she's like, kind of like right. snaps her fingers and just kind of goes back about her business. Sure, 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 sure. Um, cool. <laughs> so, so yeah, Oscar, you're sitting there awkwardly like waiting for this woman to come back and like Gogo and Boomer like doing Gogo and Boomer things like over in the corner. And he's like typing on the computer rapidly. And you're just like, uh, okay, this is weird. Um, after a few minutes, though, the woman comes back, and, uh, and she says, uh, if you follow me right this way, uh, we have a demonstration set up for you. Certainly. Okay. So, yeah, she, she buzzes, and the door, like, unlocks. Um, Gogo -Go and Boomer, you guys go with him? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Devin, I think you might have gone robot again. I heard some reverb stuff. Hello? Yep, you're robot. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you guys, you know, get up and you follow, uh, you follow them over and Mo Beta. yeah, Mo Beta. Um, they take you, uh, like sh she leads you into this, uh, into this room, um, where it's like a viewing room, right? Of like a down, like a, like an open kind of area. And, uh, it's like all got like, it's very like sterile, like white padded, you know, like, uh, it's clearly like a testing room of some sort. Um, and uh, you get you get led in there, and then um, a woman comes in, and she looks at the group of you, and she addresses you, Oscar, and uh, and she says, uh, "All right, today we're going to demonstrate the usefulness of some of our products." And um, she gets on the like the intercom, and she says, "All right, you can send the demonstrators in." And um, you see that uh, a group of three men is led into the into the middle of the room. Um. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're all wearing collars, and <laughs> oh god, and uh, and she says, once they're all led in there and like given there, and they're all like sitting there, you know, patiently. Jordan, just, I'm having flashbacks to other live fire demonstrations of armor <laughs> that we've attempted in this this rule set. <laughs> oh yeah, um, she uh, goes, uh, she goes. All right, begin the demonstration, um, and you see that up above the ceiling opens up into the atmosphere um, and the pressure is released out of that room and um, you see the three men who are standing uh, in the in the center of the room you see one of them um, he begins to like like start to breathe really heavy and like kind of like puts his hands on his knees and he's like struggling to get breath um, the one in the middle is kind of doing the same and then the one in the end is standing perfectly still like nothing's currently going on and these guys are wearing nothing but like they're wearing just like scrubs or... basically yeah they're just wearing scrubs he doesn't appear to have anything on him um and uh and uh she goes all right you may enter phase two of the demonstration um and you see a you see a woman come out and she's carrying like a like a suit like an exosuit um and uh she she hands it to uh to the center guy who takes it and he clearly, like, he puts his hand through it once and twice, and then he, like, puts it on. But as he puts it on, you can't see it anymore. It's as if he had put nothing on. Hmm. Um, and he begins, you see him, like, holding his side, and he begins to catch his breath. Um, and then he resumes the position of just standing there, like, kind of with his hands, you know, clen like, clasped at his, uh, like, in his front, like, in front of him. Um, and the other one is kind of like, he's kind of like kneeling on the ground now, like breathing. Um, 
And uh, as as this is going on, the woman in the booth with you, and she's like, we have three different types of our suits uh, available for common purchase before our modifications are made. One is a simple face mask, and she points to the one on the um, on the far right who has been doing nothing the whole time. And she's like, uh, this mask simulates rebreathing technology and is completely unseen to the eye. It's one of the best technologies we've ever developed. Um, and then uh, she goes, she's like, demonstrator number three, you can remove your mask. Um, and you see him, he just reaches up to his face and just pulls like a suction cup comes off and you can see like just barely there's like this clear almost like jelly jellyfish looking like plastic material that he pulls off and he just holds it up and uh and you see him like he's starting to breathe and he's starting to breathe heavier and like starting to lose his breath and she's just talking like everything's normal um the demonstrator number one now is kind of like on the ground um and uh, she's like, and she's talking about the second one, right? Second demonstrator. And she's like, as you witness, the second demonstrator has got our full body suit. It is easily one of the top technologies that we possess. You can operate it and install it and uh, don the equipment with almost no effort, as you saw. And again, he was like, basically, he just like reached into it like a gel and it molded to his body. Um... And so the third guy now, or the first guy now, is, like, on the ground, like, beating his fists on the ground. And she's like, demonstrator number one, we will demonstrate to you uh, our our self, or how does she call it? She says, um, probably, like, it's a self-attachment. Uh, it, uses, it uses technology previously unknown to man. And she's like... You may proceed to phase three of the demonstration. And, um, you can see demonstrator number one, he, like, he's, like, out of breath. He's breathing really heavy. He's coughing. He reaches down, and he pushes a button that's, like, on a leg strap that he has. And you see that this, the mask-like thing, that's very similar to the demonstrator number three, it, like, comes out, and you see it, like, move up his body and then cover his face. And then you see him gasping breaths of air into his... Um, into his uh, into his lungs, right? And eventually, he just like kind of rolls over on his side in like the recovery position, and like begins to breathe more normally. Um, and uh, she finishes like her demonstration. She's like, "Demonstration is complete. Thank you, subjects." And uh, the 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 dome like uh, like door the doors on the ceiling they shh, close in, and the pressure re atmospherizes. And you see them they all like remove their materials and like hand them back to the the scientist woman that's there and they all depart and uh so i'm assuming as all of you are standing there with horrific looking faces on um she goes all right is there any questions oscar oscar looks over and just says this this is truly impressive but i personally i need something heftier Perhaps my crewmates would want more discreet options for such equipment, but uh, you see, I found <laughs> we we found this place with limited information. Your please please don't misunderstand. Your uh, demonstration was incredibly impressive, but this is perhaps not what I am looking for. She goes, oh, well, then perhaps you can tell us what you are looking for and we can provide the best service possible. You say do heftier. You... Do you mean uh, weaponized? Have you ever contracted assault suits? <laughs> she, she looks and she's like, yes, we have before for the military. And how about those simply wanting mil spec? She's like, it requires a lot of paperwork to complete a task like that, but we can at least provide a demonstration to see if our suits are to your liking. You're going to get someone killed. There. <laughs> uh, he says, we, we are here. We may as well. Very well. 
And you said that your friends, and uh, she looks at Gogo when she says that, would you be interested in purchasing one of our uh, available suits? What's what's the look on Gogo's face currently? Yeah, Margo's like currently just stunned into kind of horrified silence at the moment. And she's just kind of like, um, no. <laughs> she's like, oh, it's a shame. The technology really has come far in the past hundred years. I'm excited to see what we can do in the next hundred. Margo's like, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she goes, all right, it'll be just a few moments to set up the demonstration. Uh, we haven't done an assault suit demonstration in some time. This should be fun. And she leaves out of, like, the employees-only door and leaves you in the in the viewing room. Right as she's, like, getting ready, or right as she leaves, uh, Boomer, like, raises his hand as if to try and get her attention. And then realizing she's already gone, just, ah, no. <laughs> right. So do you... I think Margot turns to Boomer and is like, what do you think that type of demonstration entails? Lots. Oscar, Oscar Lots just looks blocks. over and says, likely fireworks. That's what I was uh, afraid of. <laughs> if the suits are good, the subjects should be just fine. Margo so. just, like, stares at you because she's, like, the fact that you have no emotion towards what's happening here is just, like, terrifying to her. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, you could I, probably pick I, up emotion if you had a keener sense of smell. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> He's probably, like, shitting his pants through pheromones. Maybe not that bad, but... Um, yeah, so so I think that if since you guys are in the viewing room, you're seeing them set up for the demonstration... Um, I think you see them bring out like a like a fair amount of different technologies and boomer it's like a field day down there man um, this place man um, they they clearly are on kind of the cutting edge of some things but are also somehow a bit archaic in some of their designs um, it seems like there, there's something at work here that you've never experienced, that you've never seen before. Like, first of all, the way that those technologies worked, the way that they showed you, like the 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 suits, that's like that's like TL five shit. Like, you don't just that's, make that with current equipment, right? Uh, that is artifact equipment. Yeah, essentially. and like, so so it's it's a little weird, but you can tell like just based on how this place works and based on what you know about the sector like there's no way they're just something is something is not right here like right there's some trick to it or um you know maybe they really are this far progressed and they haven't been discovered yet by the rest of the sector right like maybe that's maybe that's something that's that's occurring um but yeah no it's this is high level stuff uh, very, very technical. Um, but as they're, like, setting up for the next demonstration, um, you see that there's there's uh, quite a few men that are, like, hauling around different, like, um, pieces and parts, and they're changing, like, the, the configuration of the room to make it look like a, like a... They're putting, like, fake, like, plants and, and rocks and stuff, like, as demonstration barriers, and, like, they're making it look like a battlefield, essentially, right, is what they're doing. Um... And they're also setting up, like, props and stuff, like, tanks and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's it's pretty cool. But when they're all completed, um, when they're done and there's nobody else, like, sitting out, a uh, woman walks in again and she's like, Very well, are you ready for the next demonstration? Yeah, Oscar, Oscar nods enthusiastically. <laughs> yeah, so she hits a button she's like, All right, you may begin demonstration military. Execute. Margo just takes one hand and covers her eyes. <laughs> Do you peek out of the? Out of this light? from the mm-hmm. this from the girl who wants a rocket launcher. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that I think that um, you see there are there's like a there's like a line of men that come out with the collars on, uh, and in in the white scrubs, um, and you see them pick up like foam, like uh, rifles. And, like, foam helmets, and, like, they put them on, and they're, like, strapping them on, and then they take up, like, positions, 
like on the battlefield facing in one direction. Um, and then you see uh, a door opens, like a bay door opens on the side, uh, and the woman goes, first we'll demonstrate the rapid entry assault suit that we developed for the Paphos military. Um, and she's, you see a woman walk out, and she's like, she's got like tats up her arms, and like she's got like earrings and a nose ring, like she looks very punk, right? Um, and you see her like, like talking to her, her wrist, um, and you see like a, like a, uh, <laughs> like a cube, maybe about, mm, maybe about like one, maybe about like two feet by two feet by two feet cube, uh, drops from the ceiling and lands in front of her. And a la Iron Man three, uh, she basically picks this thing up and it folds out into a suit that she can then get into. Um, and it's a little bit lighter. You can tell it's like a little bit lighter construction than your full assault suit. Um, and, uh, you see that the, the, the guys who have these fake rifles, um, they begin like firing blanks, right? They're, they're probably not foam rifles. Like I said before, they're like firing blanks and they're like shooting like sparks out or whatever, like demonstration, demonstrating. Um, and, and you see her, um, she, you know, like, uh, the, the woman is describing, she's like, uh, standard issue are, are, um, are equipped with uh, one onboard weapon, the uh, storm cannon, and then she shows it, and like the the woman picks up the the cannon, and w you see there's a little like HUD that pops up. It's from like the interior of the suit, uh, and you can see like the display of what she's doing, and you see like lock on target like three of the guys, um, and then she just fires, and uh, the guys get hit and they go down. And uh, I need everybody to make me perception checks. The three of you, at least. Minus Devin. Okay, good. Okay, good. All right. Perfect. Oh, go, go. Oh, wow. Um... These guys look like they got shot. Like, these guys look like they just died. They fly backwards. <laughs> they roll down off of their fake barriers and stuff, and they start bleeding out. Like, their chests are just bleeding out onto the ground. Okay. So, as player, obviously, but as Marco, I think she would gasp and probably run up to the glass, wherever, or whatever's in front of them, between them and the the demonstration. Yeah, it's like quote, a, it's unquote. Like, yeah, it's bulletproof glass. and just like put both hands up on the bulletproof glass and like just you know not yeah. be able to know what to do with herself <laughs> right and oscar and boomer you see that there was clearly like it's for show right like you're able to identify that it's for show um but they're really good actors <laughs> like if you if you hadn't noticed so well that like if you hadn't seen like the blood packet explode or Maybe, maybe Oscar, maybe you can see one of them is still breathing, like, normally. Um, or, like, maybe Boomer, maybe you see one of them is still, like, looking around a little bit. Like, y you guys are able to see. Um, and uh, the woman says to you, Gogo, she goes, quite impressive, isn't it? Wide-eyed, Margo turns to her and she goes, impressive? <laughs> I'd, Boomer's actually going to stop Margo before she can do anything. He puts his his uh, hand like very gently on her shoulder and just leans in and just in a rapid fire rush. Of, Take care. It is only a show. We are not going to. It, it's not real death. Just watch Ur and Ar. It, it's still very much alive. I like how your your Russian is just you in a uh, Russian accent. <laughs> yeah, because I don't speak Russian, so this is what you get. When I switch languages, I'm just going to dip the accent in. Got it. That makes perfect sense to me. I think that snaps Margo out of it immediately because whenever Boomer really needs to get her attention, he always speaks to her in Russian. Sure. So yeah, she's yeah, kind of yeah. like, oh, okay. And then she kind of gets it. Yeah. And um, she, I think I think the woman says, in the next demonstration, we will show you uh, the agility of the um, of the, the rapid, rapid uh, Don assault suit. Um, and the woman that's in the suit, she begins like running and she's running at a pretty good pace. And like, uh, one of the guys like jumps out and tries to like butt stalk her with the with the rifle, and she just like takes she just backhands him, 
and he just flies into a wall. And I think all of you realize she actually did backhand him. Like, she hit him really hard. Probably cracked a rib or two. Um, and so the rest of the guys, like, try to run after her. And, like, she's just, she's, like, picking one up and throwing him to the side and, like, headbutting one of them. And, like, now it's actually brutal down there. Um, but, like, after, like, a few seconds, like, the, uh, she, um, like, the yeah, woman stops I, I and the demonstration stops. Okay. I was going to say, Oscar, if that went on much longer, Oscar would probably have said that it was sufficient. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that, like, like she she ends it right about the time yeah. you were like, oh, that's sufficient. She's like, oh, like yeah. Maybe about the time that he starts raising his, his hand to say, like, hey. <laughs> yeah. That's about the time that it finishes. Um, and you see the woman, like, get out. Uh, and you see her, like, start to close up the thing, which appears to be much more of a process to get it back into its cube. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you see the guys that are, like, like getting each other up, and, like, one's, like, throwing an arm over the other one, and they're, like, helping out. One of them's probably got, like, a limp leg that they're limping out. Um, and you can see that there's a couple of women that uh, come in, and they uh, they have, like, like med kits and stuff, and they're, like, a- attending to the the demonstrators. Hmm. Overall, it seems I, I, it seems pretty normal assault suity with just maybe a few more cool add-ons to it. The the unpacking definitely because I mean Oscar has been around pretty heavy armament before, but like the the unpacking from <laughs> yeah yeah it's designed that, to be a little bit more portable. Yeah, that's a neat trick. <laughs> Right, that's that's like the the main difference between that and a normal assault suit, right? Right. It still so, takes like a little bit to get into, but it's much faster than like the whatever like fucking five minutes or some shit that it takes to get into a normal assault suit. Sure. Um, he says, uh, "You are you are you still making these? Are these production units?" Um, she, she, like, looks and she's like, eh, here or there, when we have, uh, requisitions. What time frame? She's like, custom built? Hmm. Probably a long time. And also, we would need a lot of paperwork from the, from the government of Paphos, you understand. I see. What manner of paperwork exactly? She's like, ah, typical requisition orders. You know, they make you fill out some forms. If uh, this were to be exported, could that be circumvented? She goes, perhaps it's not my call. I just make the stuff and demonstrate it. That would be up to up to them. And she kind of like looks at you and she says, if you're operating for the Freedom Council. That would probably expedite the process. I'm sure that's why you're here, yes? He... He, uh... Yeah, Oscar just nods. <laughs> right. Yeah, no yeah. verbal. Just, just, yeah, sure. He, he, he nods and he, he just says, um... What sort of... What's... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if uh, Oscar would would paraphrase Hunter S. Thompson in reality, but I think I'd like to think he would say, "Let's let's get down to brass tacks here." Sure. Um, so he says, uh, "Can we talk price?" She's like, "It's expensive. Individually, may not be uh, quite worth it, but." It can certainly enhance the Freedom Council's uh, power level, for sure. Per unit, in bulk, 8,000. And singly? Be more expensive just to make a single one. Hmm. Would would definitely tax our resources. Most of it probably have to be hand-built, since the machines can only operate at such capacity. Eh, maybe 10k. But I'm not the numbers person. Just giving you averages. Sure. You buy it with less systems. Meh. Maybe you get cheaper price. K- 
can you point me to like um oscar would just ask like at this point you know he's like okay great yep nice nice demonstration uh but he just wants like to talk to the the engineers basically like the people who actually draw up the paperwork for such things sure so he he's just asking like um could you just put me in contact with a a representative sure absolutely i can put you in touch with one of our one of our acquisition specialists comes over you know he offers her his information and such yeah she's like yes right away ma'am we'll take this right to the acquisitions officer perfect she nods and uh she's like well if that'll be all And she departs out of the employees only door. Leaving you guys to kind of like, you know, leave at your own accord. And as we're leaving, Boomer's going to once again search the net. Uh, although he's looking for a uh, a work a workstation, a workshop. Oh man, my work's failing me. I'm looking for a workshop that might be available to uh, rent, like, to lease hourly or for a singular project. Sure. Yeah, you can totally do a search for that. Um, So, uh, I think that uh, that'll require a computer troll, which I'll let you make, um, to search for, like, a, a, a rental, a workshop area where you could work. Now, understandably... Um, knowing what you know, Gogo will have to probably be present in any place that, you know, will let you do this. I'm aware. Okay. Yeah. But it'll require a computer check. You can go ahead and roll it. Yeah. Nine's totally good. I think you find like a, like a, uh, what'd be the equivalent here? I don't know if there's like a coffee shop equivalent of like workshops. Um, I'm trying to think of a good like an real internet world. cafe but <laughs> yeah yeah i think that like an engineering cafe yeah an engineering cafe there has to be something like along those lines right like it's definitely a thing that would occur i'll i'll, I'll think about I, that i know in the fantasy setting it's like hey if i go to this blacksmith i wouldn't right my own yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. I have my own materials this, yeah this, uh, i don't know if it works little... like that it, in particular i don't know if it works like that on this planet um is the main is the main thing i'll i'll get back to you on that one um because i want to jump back over to uh to mr um uh mr fortune Fortune and chains fortune and chains mad adventures um yeah so you guys uh after a while get over to the location that you've been designated as uh bertha's uh bertha's you know uh house and you walk in um well, actually, I should say, you get to the door, and um, there's a big bouncer. Uh, he's a guy. He's big. He's you know bulky. He's got. He looks more like a. Uh, he looks more like a for show uh, weightlifter as opposed to a uh, actual bodybuilder uh, okay. strength trainer. Um, yeah. But uh, he's there, and he's got a collar, and um, there's a woman standing by, just kind of like idly, um, like uh, like flipping through like a book. And she looks over and she says, she, she like pulls down her, her goggles and she's wearing like a, it's, it's inside, right? Like it's, it's all, you're in the environment at this point. Um, okay. And, uh, she, uh, she pulls down like her sunglasses cause she's wearing I, them indoors. I, I like, I like change. <laughs> Chaytun or four Yeah. Chaytun. Chaytun. Cause Chay-tun. it's fortune. Oh yeah. Chaytun. Yeah. Chaytun. Chaytun um, looks good. Canon. <laughs> Canon. It's in, it's in there. Um, she like pulls down her sunglasses and she looks at you and she goes, "What you doing, foreigners?" I was sent to find Bertha. Yeah, who sent you? Martha. She pushes up her sunglasses like from the bridge and she's like, "Go on in." And the the big guy kind of like steps out of the way. I walk in. So you guys enter. Um, and it's, it's 100% a, uh, a male strip club. 100%. Nice. Um, the music is like, like, as soon as the door opens, the music is like blasting. Uh, it's just techno, like really hard techno. And there's 
there's guys dancing in various uh, articles of clothing or lack thereof. Um, there's a lot of women in here who are like throwing money or credits or, you know, they actually probably in this world, you exchange credits for like chips that you throw up, like flick up on stage. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, instead of, cause you can't really like throw credits up on stage. That's dumb. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you toss probably, cred sticks at him. Yeah. <laughs> right. That doesn't make any sense. You probably go and exchange like, Hey, I want a hundred, hundred credits worth of, you know, chips or dollars or, you know, slips of like slips for money or whatever. Whatever yeah. it is, um, balls, you know. yeah, whatever, whatever the current currency is for uh, strip clubs, and uh, you know they're they're like throwing it up there, and uh, all the servers are guys, and they're typical just straight up just a bow tie and speedo, and that's it. That's like all they're wearing, um, and uh, you know they're carrying around drinks, and like they're all very is, nice. Is they look very I good. Follow? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I assure you, there is no nudity in that wink. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It looks, yeah, uh, like <laughs> yeah, and so then you you guys uh, you guys go in. You like sit at the bar. Like chains chains like looks around. He's like bug eyed a little bit, and he's like, "This shit is weird, dude." Uh, <laughs> pro probably to paraphrase someone from earlier this session, why well, it takes all kinds. <laughs> right? Yeah, he's like, I guess, but I can tell you what. As soon as we're done with this contract, I ain't fucking never coming back here. That makes two of us. <laughs> he nods, like, knowingly. Up, I don't want to end up in one of them collars. He's like, collars? I don't want one of them bow ties. And he nods at, like, a server that walks <laughs> by. And he's like, yeah, the good news is... And he, like, slaps his gut. He's like, I probably wouldn't like, wouldn't like the way I look anyway. It's good for me. You, on the other hand, eh. You probably look real pretty to them. <laughs> Um, Let's just get this done. So yeah, you guys, you're sitting at the bar, and like a woman comes up, um, and she looks at you, and she goes, "Y'all lost foreigners." <coughs> and um, Chains like looks at not. you, and, like he's real uncomfortable, and like kind of just being silent for once. Um, hopefully not. Looking for Bertha. Bertha, huh? Not many visitors come see Bertha, especially foreigners. Hold on, I'll go get her. And uh, she walks into the back, and as her name implies, because for some reason all women named Bertha are massive, um, this very large woman, um, voluptuous maybe, if if you're if you're feeling frisky, um, woman comes and uh, she she looks at you across the bar, and she uh, she kind of like sets one hand on the bar, and she looks at. She looks at chains. She looks at fortune. She looks back at change. She looks at fortune. She goes, "Y'all here for a job?" Maybe. <laughs> she goes. She goes. You might look good in the bow tie. Not that kind of job. She nods like knowingly, and she's like, "All right, come see me in my office." And uh, she like motions to like a back door, and assume you guys get up. And Chains is like Chains is like holding his cloak like real close around him. <laughs> he's like, "This is some fucked up bullshit. I ain't down with this shit." Um, he's probably muttering under his breath. Um, yeah, probably that exact same thing under his breath. Yep, yeah, exactly. Uh, so you guys go in and you enter in, and the music kind of fades a little bit as you close the door. Um, and you see Bertha comes in. It's like an office, uh, and she sits down at a desk in this big like lounge chair. Um, and uh, it, she creaks a little bit as she sits down. And she goes, "Well, if you ain't here to dance for me, what you here to do?" Uh, we were trying to maybe get some information on an individual involved with the Kuchera Syndicate. She she kind of raises an eyebrow. And she says, "Just the two of you involved with how?" Uh, he's part of it, but not a very big part. Yes. I know who you're talking about. Well, at least I think I do. But how do you wish to get involved with him? I just need the person. She she kind of like looks like expecting like a further answer, uh, and Chains just goes. Chains probably says like, "Um, excuse me, Miss. Uh, I listen. We're just trying to get the guy. You know, he's. I'm sure you've heard. You seem like a well-connected lady. It's." 
It's our job. And she's like, I didn't pick you for bounty hunters, but I understand the process. What's in it for me? <laughs> uh, I just looked over and saw the Chippendales picture, sorry. <laughs> Chippendales. Uh, on the on the um, Discord. Oh, yeah. Um, Chains probably looks at her and says, uh, and says, he's like, I ain't wearing no collar, miss. That's, that's not gonna happen. I don't care what you fucking try and do to me. I think she chuckles and she's like, no, no, you're cute. Not that cute. I, I look over at Chains and I'm like, I think she more meant monetary. She's, she looks and she's like, I don't need money neither. What else do you have to mm -hmm. offer? As, you need as your something friend taken said, care of? She's, she's like, as your friend said, I am well connected. But those connections, well, mostly I deal in information. What do you have to offer me? Any, well, juicy pieces of information that I can use? Perhaps to leverage someone? Leverage something? Maybe you guys tell me a little bit about what two members of whatever bounty hunter clan you're dealing with are looking for some guy here. Um, well, we're from the Claris group. I can tell you that much. And I show her my tattoo on my shoulder, whatever. Yeah. Verifying. Yeah, I think Chains, Chains <laughs> has it on his like forearm, like underneath of his forearm. And so yeah. he probably like rolls up his sleeve and shows it as well. Uh, I know... I'm supposed to pick up Victor Slavsky and take him to Kakachkin. Kakachkin? Kakachkin? That's all I know. She's like, who put out the hit on him? He's a nice boy. He won't let a collar put, be put on him, though. Much like yourselves. <coughs> Seems like a dangerous place for someone without a collar. Seems like a dangerous place anywhere these days. But, hmm, I might be able to work with that. But... I'm feeling kind today. Perhaps I tell you exactly where he's at. And maybe call in a favor later. How's that sound? I look over at Chains. <laughs> Chains looks and he's like, as long as it ain't no goddamn collar. And as long as I ain't on this goddamn planet. That's, yeah. I look back at him and say, as long as a favor doesn't require us to come back to this planet, I'll do whatever you want. He's like, Eh, I could always use a favor. But, uh, I don't look kindly to people who go back on their word. You understand? You can check with the Claris group. We never have and we never will. She nods and she's I like... Mean, unless the money's better, of course. She's like, alright. I'll tell you exactly where he is. Here. Let me show you. And, uh, she hits a button, like on a remote... And, like, the, the desk, like, window goes down, and you see, outside of the glass, um, you see that there's a group of men sitting in, like, the corner of the bar, um, and they're having drinks, and you see Victor is just sitting in the bar right now. <laughs> uh, and I think that's just where we, where we cut. Um, oh, good lord, this is gonna be ridiculous at the end of the session so good game yes <laughs> all right so y'all need some experience let's see here y'all completed a mission and you get session experience so everybody can go ahead and tack on an extra 375 experience yeah. Sweet deal. Should get everybody close, if not past that level two mark now. Yeah. Cool. Should I go ahead and roll? Should I roll for? We'll for do help? that at the beginning no. of next session. We ran a little over okay. a few minutes. We'll do that at the beginning of next session. Sounds um, good. Yeah, but cool. Uh, remember, beginning of next session, we'll also see what you guys got at level two, and it'll be awesome and all grand. Yeah. And happy. Um. But that's it. Hope you guys had fun. 
uh, I'm going to mute you Absolutely. real quick. And I'll yep. be back in just a second. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone enjoyed today's session. Uh, it was a lot of fun for me. Um, I should I should put a disclaimer, uh, perhaps. This is literally how the planet is written in the in in, in my notes, uh, which I did not create. I did not purposely create a s extremely sexist planet. Uh, but hey, there it is. Uh, hope it's not too uncomfortable for some people because I know it can be. But that's okay because we like to play with cool themes here um, as a storytelling arc, not as a actual in reality we hate all men arc um that's it that's all i got hope you guys had fun i'm gonna go ahead and close out now enjoy from all of us to you have a wonderful night